What's up guys, uh, welcome back, this is my boy again, Adam Sling, how you guys doing, welcome to another video, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this video from, I hope you guys are very much doing okay. So we have so much to cover in this video, we're going to check out some political development issues, like uh, the church contribution, most especially coming from ROCCG uh, Church, headed by Deboe, and also we're going to check out uh, Pastor Paul's statement. Over one said Paul, uh, uh, Saul, and David. Uh, also, we're going to check out uh, Asha Buari and uh, Peace Square statement as well, or uh, Oji Uzo Kalu, and so many other stuff we're going to address in this video, guys. You know, uh, let's be honest. If we understand Nigerians, we know there are some Nigerians who need a superhero. A superhero to look to look up to someone that will show them direction someone that will tell them even what to do someone that will dictate on how to on how they can live their life their daily life there are people like that as nigerians they cannot make any decision decision that involves their life they can't make it except if someone out there being a man of God tells them what to do, even if the answer is as clear as crystal is front of them, they won't still take that answer. They will rather go and meet a pastor that will tell them, yeah, that answer you have seen is the right answer. They do not make decisions on their own. There are human beings, eh? That will go as far to ask their pastors, their imam, on how they should sleep with their wives. Yes. There are women that will go as far to ask their imam or their pastors to dictate to them when and how they should meet their husbands. Yes. There are people like that who need a superhero to, to tell them... A, Whatever decision, they, they can't make their life decision without bringing it to another person to scrutinize. There are people like that. So, likewise, this election. I don't understand how you have gone through the pains of the last eight years. Be it pain or happiness, you have gone through it. You cannot see, tell yourself... If the past eight years you felt pain or you felt happiness, you still need somebody to tell you what to do. Don't you think something is wrong with you? Don't you think so? Well, we're going to address some really <laughs> awkward issue. Someone was calling out Arrow CCG, the Redeemed Church, for not taking a stand in this election. They are saying that... Uh, well, the guy said, Dear ROCCG, his name is King James. I want to categorically state that if you remain silent in this essential and defining election of Nigeria till election day and don't make your stand known, I will arrogantly resign my membership and I will take with me, the sound equipment and lighting I donated. Then, there is a, a strong activist. His name is F. Young. He said, What happened to the political department that the ROCCG formed during the primaries? You don't have to mention the names of a part of a particular political party or a particular candidate, but you have a duty to guide your members on the attributes of the candidate they should vote for. Should a church only be politically active when a member is contesting? Is the body of Christ no longer one? It should be about the betterment of Nigeria. 
I have a problem with some religious leaders in this country. I have seen firsthand in Akwa Ibon State how corrupt religion leaders have aided the criminality of corrupt politicians. The nation is bleeding. Every pastor and imam that truly cares about a better Nigeria should speak out against those who are holding us down. Prayers alone will never salvage Nigeria. It will take responsible and credible leadership to rescue this country. This is why the Bible say, what say that when the righteous is on the throne, the people rejoice. In other words, when the unrighteous is on the throne, the people suffer. Silent at the time is a sin. I categorically understand what F. Young is saying, and let us be completely honest. A lot of pastors have been very, very much outspoken. Pastor Suleiman is very outspoken, and he said the other day, his children, himself, are obedient. His wife, his family are obedient, and people who love him will be obedient. And again, Adeboye, or Oyedekbo, sorry, Oyedekbo, have said his own. Paul and Nietzsche have said his own. A lot of other pastors as well have said their home. They are voting for Peter Obi. Why others again are voting for Tunubu? A pastor said, I don't want to play the video. A pastor said he saw a prophecy of Peter Obi crying an article like this. After the general election, after Tinubu won the general election. Good and fine, guys. Good and fine, you know. But I do not think eh, it's about time we should remain quiet. As a Nigeria, why do you even think you need a pastor to tell you what to do? We are too blinded by religion in this country. You are telling me your pastor that is at home, that has cars, get a lot of donations, that can travel anywhere with private jet, should come and tell you, you that is staying at home, who is suffering for this Naira, should come and tell you how you should vote? Man, ha! Do, don't you think something's wrong with you? Ah! Which man will come meet me, they tell me, say, Adam Sling, vote for this person. If I know, I feel tear that Imam's lap. Now you they follow me, they suffer. Now you know what they pass through. Who are you? You say you be a man of God, and so guard them what? Am I not a child of God as well? Am I not a man of God? You people just take these men of God so high esteem. They are human beings. They have interests. They have interest. Human beings must have interest. Then, uh, we're still going to look at Pastor Paul. But firstly, um, Rega said, In 2015, some men of God endorsed candidates claiming that they got revolution from God. But look at where Nigeria is today. Politicians are using religion as a campaign strategy to win elections. And you will keep falling for their game. Forget men of God. Learn to think for yourself. So let's go over to Pastor Paul and uh, let's listen to what Pastor Paul said about Saul and David in the Bible. The elections may not go exactly the way you want them to, if there are elections. Amen? They may not go exactly how you want them to go. But I want to speak to you in a parable. And uh, before I do, I want you to take this admonition and go home and commit some time every day, even if you pray only in the Holy Spirit. And you understand what praying in the Holy Spirit means. And pray for a peaceful transition of power in our country. 
There are many forces vying for power, and you must be careful to ensure that God commits Nigeria into your hands and to your prayers. And if you return his word to him, it will not return to Nigeria void. So you must pray that we will have a peaceful transition of power. Here's the parable. Saul came before David. David did not come before Saul. Saul will come. And David will come after. And, and hold it for a moment. Saul was not all that bad. He didn't start out bad. He actually started out as a prophet. And he did a lot of good uh, because he had half a heart. David had a whole heart, or rather Saul had half a heart. David had a whole heart. And it was necessary that he come after. And so bear that in mind. Saul will come. David will come after. And that means while Saul is there, Samuel, that's your company, must remain in prayer and keep encouraging David. Even the congregation self are even confused. They are like, where did this pastor the young? <laughs> Pastor Saul and David. That Samuel should keep encouraging David. You see why they always tell Nigeria should pray, pray. What has God not done for us? What is prayer? What has God not answered us? God has answered our prayers. Gave us the population. Didn't give us any natural disaster. You saw the earthquake happening. It's not happening in Nigeria. Gave us the resources. Gave us the youth. And we are still praying to encourage David. Oh God. They still want you to pray to encourage David after Saul comes. So the souls we have been experiencing since, they are not enough. Man. Sorry. Now, see, in Nigeria, people may do us eh? You now go see, you people will see educated person because he speaks beautifully. Because he speaks well, fluently, well dressed. You see his face, you no, know, well looking, really, really good. You think that person is sent. There is a madman in your community then that will be telling you the truth for the past years, but you don't believe him. You don't regard him because he dress, he dress ruggedly. He doesn't know what he's doing. You don't regard him. But when you start saying this beautiful man, one song. Has a lot of people listening to him. You think that guy is saying the right goddamn thing. You think he's saying the, the right thing because he speaks beautifully. He knows how to put the English well together. He knows how to put one or two together and we captivate your soul. Before any man will captivate my soul eh, with the talk, eh, Kai, you know, say that man and our God himself. Because I have seen a lot. Despite my little age, I have seen a lot. They are all human beings. We are all human beings on this heart. And human beings deceives. You're going to listen to somebody saying, Paul, I see I'm not crit criticizing what uh, so, uh, Pastor Paul is saying. I don't know if it's right or wrong. If congregation knows. But that wouldn't stop me from saying what I want to say. And everybody out there has his own whatever they want to say. Hmm? He might be saying the right stuff. He might be saying the right thing. I do not know. I don't know where he's getting his power from. He's man of God so far. Or maybe when he was saying something that I like, something that about then he was supposed to be our beer. We were all laughing and all the rest. We thought he was also saying the right thing. Then now he's not saying something that you like. You think he's saying the wrong thing. But however, why must you want anybody to tell you how and how? Why are you even speaking in parables? Is this the time to speak in parables and confuse people to go and read deeper? For what? Don't say the right, the straight stuff. Don't say Paul, David. Speak in parables. Be here, you day here, or you know day here. You just day in the middle. What's the meaning of that? Don't be deceived with that. 
Is that not deceived? You know they hear, I know they hear, and they speak in parables. So that if you say this is what I meant, you say, oh, you don't understand the, Bi the biblical parable that I've just said. You, you don't understand. You are misquoting me. So if I say you said this, you also say I'm misquoting you. If I say you said this, you also say I'm misquoting you. So there will there will never be anything that I'll, that I'll say I will interpret your words that you won't say I'm misquoting you. Because you spoke in parables. That is the meaning of parables. I can deny it. I can say you do not understand. Well, Nigerians were not quite happy with Paul. And they did dog out some of his pictures. They dug out himself and the uh, uh, gov governor uh, Sawolu. He heck him said, No one that Pastor Paul preached on Sunday that Nigeria should expect another soul. But we say, No, it's David's time. The corn is in their pocket, can never be hidden. Then another person said, This Pastor Paul, the, the GO house on rock ministry in Lagos, and his son, who just graduated from the foreign university is touched supporter of Bola Tinubu like some of us here for the gullible and the brainwash this okay I don't want to say that these guys want good life for their kids while wishing our country evil then you 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 guys are watch that movie the king of boys someone said when they acted king of boys and there was a popular pastor in Lagos in the movie that endorsed the tyrant. We thought it was just a movie. We are seeing it play out right before our eyes. They are telling us to pray so we can endure another eight years. Telling us to pray so that so we come so that you can endure another eight years. And while you keep praying and encouraging David, What has God not done for Nigeria? Let's I ask yourself that question. What are you still praying for? What do you want God to do for you? What has God not done for us? Tell me. We have not even appreciative towards God. What has God not done for us? Tell me now. It's making me really, really hungry. What has God not done for Nigeria? What has God not given us? What has God not given us? What did God, what do you want me God come do for you again? Give you the population. Give you natural resources. Ha! Give you activists. What, what else do you need? You need angel of God to come down as a like, human form to fight on your behalf? What is this now? Yeah, this country, people, human beings in this country, I don't understand. They don't have minds. To think on their own or what now? Well, let's forget about that. And uh, well, I have so much to think to talk about. Oh, 18 minutes, guys. <laughs> so Asha Buhari decided to post uh, something on her social media page, insinuating that President Buhari Bari have instructed the CBN to redistribute the 500 naira notes. And the 500 naira, 1000 naira note to coexist with the new note. <laughs> I don't know where Asha Buhari for see fake news. But however, she has deleted it though after CBN said fake news. According to she posted it, she said the attention of the. Okay, what uh, Asha Buhari posted was that due to the current. An unpleasant situation happening in Nigeria, in line with the, pres with the president, after leaving, after having a close meeting with him on the twentieth of uh, February, twenty twenty-two, Central Bank of Nigeria. Okay, who are we, guys? I've instructed Central Bank of Nigeria to redistribute the one, the old one thousand naira note and the old five hundred naira note. Well, Central Bank says, "See, oh, whoever posts that post the fake. How can our first lady president be posting the fake news?" <laughs> well, <laughs> this country. Eh? Then, uh, former Abia State Governor Ojuz Okalo said that he is also suffering the same thing that Nigerians are suffering. 
It's not the fault of every party people. I'm suffering the same fate. Here in the Ibere, people cannot find money. Do you know, when I go out and campaign, I used to dance the drummers, about 50,000, 100,000. Now I cannot dance the 1,000 Naira, but I don't have it. So it, it is a process that if the central bank and the federal government have taken into consideration, this is not the best time to have done it. Remember, I sat in the Senate, and I oppose that this should be extended to 31st of April, after my birthday on 21st of April. So to me, you, you, you can see it's a policy. It's a good thing. The policy is right. But I don't keep money in my house. I'm suffering. The other day, my house manager told my wife in Abuja that we have no money to cook food. My, ma my wife was virtually rolling around where we feed over 250 people in this camp every day. So I, I don't know. It, it's a problem to me. And it's a problem to everybody. So this is why that if I'm in position of Mr. President... As so okay, is that is uh, Uzo Kalo, the former Abia State Governor and the sitting Senator. And uh, according to P Square Okoye, P Square uh, Peter Okoye, well, he just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Peter P Square. I'm trying to get what he said. He said, if you think I'm supporting Peter Obi because he's an Igbo, try replacing him with Yemi Usimbajo against Uzo Oji Uzo Kalo and see if myself and Igbos won't massively vote for Yemi Usimbajo. Exactly. Just eat the nail on the head. Bam. So guys, thank you very much for watching the boy Gadam's link. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. Catch you next time.